Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton and today's topic is atomic spectra. Objectives for today will be explaining the creation of bright line emission and absorption spectra and also using this information to determine the elements comprising an unknown sample from its emission or absorption spectra. So let's take a look. Atoms can only emit and absorb certain frequencies of photons and we talked about that previously and the photon frequencies that are absorbed or emitted correspond directly to the transitions in the electron energy levels as the electrons jump from one energy level to another, either up or down. What you end up with then are elements that can only give off or absorb radiation in specific frequencies or when we're talking about light in specific colors. So this leads to unique spectra for the different atoms. Now when an object is heated until it glows or incandesces, such as uh, an Edison type light bulb, you get a continuous energy spectrum. This is known as black body radiation. So in the diagram here you can see in wavelengths from 100 to 1000 nanometers, and really visible light is here from 400 to 700 nanometers, you get all of the colors of the rainbow. That's incandescence. When we talk about something like a gas discharge lamp, which works by exciting electrons by an application of a very high voltage. Then as the electrons jump to an energy level, they relax shortly thereafter. They fall back down to a lower energy level, and as they do that, they emit a photon. That photon comes at a specific frequency. The spectrum, therefore, isn't continuous. All you have are a bunch of photons at each of these energy levels, at each of these frequencies corresponding to the falls of the electrons. The analysis of these spectra, therefore, allows the determination of what the gas is made of. So, as an example, if we look at the top here, what we're showing is incandescence. Black body radiation, an Edison type light bulb emits all colors. It's broken up by a prism, and what you see on the other side is the Roy G. Bib, the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and everything in between. All of the colors of the rainbow. If instead you take a bright light, an incandescent light that's emitting all of those colors, and shine it through a cold gas, the ones that are going to get absorbed, the specific frequencies absorbed, correspond only to the jumps in energy levels. So what you get out the other side are all of the colors of the rainbow, except these black lines corresponding to where those specific frequencies were absorbed. This is called an absorption spectrum. You get all of the colors except the ones that are absorbed by the element. Finally, we have the emission spectrum on the bottom, where we have a hot or an excited gas, where the electrons then fall back down to a lower energy level and emit a photon, take that radiation, shine it through a prism, and what we see is the exact inverse of the absorption spectrum. We see frequencies of light, colors of light, corresponding directly to the energy level transitions in the gas. So three types of spectrums. We have the continuous spectrum, the absorption spectrum, and the emission spectrum. And we can use emission spectrum and absorption spectrum in order to determine what an element is made out of because they are unique to that element due to the uniqueness of the energy level transitions for electrons. If we look at a sample question, the bright line emission spectrum of an element can be explained by and we have four choices. Electrons transitioning between discrete energy levels in the atoms of that element. Well, that sounds promising. Protons acting as both particles and waves. Okay, interesting, but not really uh, explaining what's going on. Electrons located in the nucleus. Now, we just know that's not true. And protons being dispersed uniformly throughout the atoms of that element. Yeah, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense either. So by far our best answer is one. Bright line emission spectrum is caused by electrons transitioning between those specific discrete energy levels in the atoms of that element. In question two, the diagram here represents the bright line spectra of four elements, A, B, C, and D, there they are, and the spectrum of an unknown gaseous sample there at the top. Based on comparisons of these spectra, which two elements are found in the, unknown in the unknown sample? So we need to find elements that have lines in the exact same place as the unknown sample. And as I look, I'll look for places, well, in our unknown we've got a line here, we've got a line there, that matches up. 
in B, we've got a line here. We've got a similar line up here in the unknown. So I would say B has to be one of our elements. Now we also have a line here and here, here and here, and to there, to there that all correspond. So I would say that elements B and C make up the unknown sample because that's where you see the overlap of the emission spectra. Hopefully this gets you started on how atomic spectra work in ways you can use these to determine an unknown element. If you need more help looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.